The name Tyrannosaurus Rex is absolutely iconic, evoking images of a powerful ancient predator, the king of the tyrant lizards. It's obviously a very cool name, and undoubtedly the most recognisable of any dinosaur. But if you go back and examine the earliest discoveries of this legendary animal, it turns out that this shouldn't technically have been its name at all. If an animal somehow ends up being named for a second time, as is quite often the case for prehistoric ones that are based on a few scrappy bones, then the original name should take priority over the later one. And, surprisingly, Tyrannosaurus rex was not the first name given to this animal. In fact, several names were actually used for multiple T. rex specimens that were not realised to have all come from one species. The earliest known discovery of T-Rex material was a tooth uncovered back in 1874 from an area near Golden, Colorado. This tooth was sent to the famous paleontologist Othniel Charles Marsh at Yale University for examination, but he never described the fossil. However, he did describe fossilised bones found in eastern Wyoming in the 1890s that turned out to be from T-Rex. These bones were all from the body of the animal, and so Marsh classified them as belonging to a very large species of the bird mimic dinosaur Ornithomimus, naming it as Ornithomimus grandis. This name was given in 1896, but four years earlier than that, Marsh's rival Edward Cope had actually named separate material that also belonged to T-Rex. These bones came from South Dakota, and Cope believed that they had belonged to a Ceratopsian dinosaur, choosing to give the creature the name Manospondylus gigas, which means giant porous vertebra. The bones recovered from South Dakota that this name was given to were incomplete vertebrae, and it can be seen why they were thought to belong to a Ceratopsian. They look like they could have come from any large dinosaur. A few years later, in 1900, the first more complete skeletons of T-Rex were discovered, again in eastern Wyoming. Paleontologist Barnum Brown uncovered a skeleton that was about 13% complete, and then two years later found another partial specimen from the Hell Creek Formation of Montana. Another American paleontologist, Henry Fairfield Osborne, then described and named these specimens in 1905, calling the Wyoming specimen Dynamosaurus imperiosus, and finally giving the name Tyrannosaurus rex to the Montana skeleton. However, Osborne quickly realised that these two specimens were actually from the same species, and so in 1906 he published another paper synonymising the two names. Dynamosaurus imperiosus was the same as Tyrannosaurus rex, and Osborne decided that the latter took priority. So T-Rex was now in use, and quickly captured the hearts and imagination of the public. Not only was it a giant extinct land predator that looked awesome, it also had a very appealing name. But, once it turned out that the first named material of T-Rex was actually the previously mentioned Manospondylus gigas, it became clear that there was a problem. Under the rules of the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, or ICZN, the name Manospondylus should have been used instead of Tyrannosaurus, since it was named first. So why hasn't it changed? Well, M. Gigas just doesn't really sound as cool as T-Rex. It seems as though people were reluctant to point out that the name shouldn't really be in use for that animal, and so no one really bothered to change it. So for many years, T-Rex should not have been called T-Rex at all. Fortunately, this is no longer a problem. The ICZN came to the rescue of T-Rex back in the year 2000, and as of the 1st of January of that year, a new rule was brought into effect. The rule says that a newer name, which in this case would be T-Rex, can continue to be used as valid if the previous name, which would be M. Gigas, has not been used since 1899, and if the newer name has been considered valid for at least 50 years, been used in at least 25 publications, and used by a minimum of 10 authors. Conveniently, Tyrannosaurus rex fits all of these criteria, and so we no longer have to worry about a name change for this iconic predator anytime soon. T-Rex has therefore become a name known as a Nomen Protectum, or Protected Name, since it replaced the older M. Gigas, which is now considered a Nomen Oblitum, a forgotten name. So there's a brief look at some of the history of this animal and the early T-Rex research that went on. Hopefully you enjoyed this shorter video and learned something about the practice of zoological nomenclature, and also that sometimes people will bend the rules slightly to keep a cool name. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.